everyone, welcome back. It's Michael Rosmer with Reeducation. We're here to talk today about the second part of deliberate practice. Now, the last time we talked about this process, right, this loop here. But how you approach this loop has a lot to do with how well you learn and how quickly you learn. And I was having a conversation with a friend who was mentioning, you know, he'd done something for a certain amount of time and hadn't really developed a lot of competency. And this is a really common a uh, common situation that people run into is they'll see an example of somebody who has supposedly practiced a lot or worked on it a lot, but they haven't seen these big results. And the interesting thing when they've done studies is they'll find that someone can get more benefit in an hour than in a month if they just have this really focused deliberate practice. And so this process here is, I guess what we would call the like, extrinsic part of it. But there's an intrinsic part of it as well. And that's what we're going to talk about today. The first part of the intrinsic, this, this is like the, the main core piece. This is a piece that is so, so important. Is you must be very improvement focused. Okay? In other words, you can do this. You can break this down and be able to just kind of go through the motions. But the reason that deliberate practice is so effective and also so mentally draining, like it's actually quite a challenging process when they've studied it, it's generally not that fun uh, because of the fact that it requires a lot of effort. It's kind of on this boundary of knowing and not knowing. And you really have to push yourself. You really have to be focused every single time. It's like I was just at the gym uh, earlier. And, you know, just paying attention to the slight variations of where my arms are and, you know, what the proper form is makes a big, big difference, unless I'm really conscious of it. And then on top of that, paying attention to, okay, am I using this muscle, right? As I come in, am I contracting with this muscle as opposed to, you know, my body wants to use other muscles? The same concept is true. That's an example, I guess, of deliberate practice, uh, kind of a minor example. But you need to be really, really focused on improvement and narrowing down that piece and just really streamlining the process. Okay, so that's the first part, is it's highly improvement focused. And because it's highly improvement focused, we get the second part. And the second part is it's very errors focused. All right, so you're really looking for the errors and correcting the errors. One of the great ways to do this, we talked about feedback, is sometimes getting a video of yourself. Otherwise, you know, having a coach or somebody who can compare you. But if you can have a video and you can look at the video of yourself compared to the video of your reference. For example, say I was going to learn golf. I might take a video of myself, right? And I would have a video of Tiger Woods doing the same thing. And I could compare how am I different than Tiger Woods and then work on correcting that. And I might slow down the video to see, oh, okay, here I'm moving in, you know, I don't know, I'm moving my wrist some different way. Uh, I used to do kenjutsu, which is Japanese art of the sword. And there'd be things like you break your wrist, right? So you want to keep your wrist strong as opposed to broken. And little details like that really matter when you want to achieve peak performance, when you want to get the best results, when you want to have mastery. So very errors focused and really focused on improvement. The third thing that it is, is it's highly repetitive, all right? Because what you're doing, literally the process here, is you're building uh, and strengthening connections in the brain. So you're, what they'll say, and this is kind of the scientific explanation of it, is you have your, uh, it's like wires in your brain, and there's a, a chemical called myelin, and you're basically wrapping those wires in, and the more myelin you have around there, the stronger the connection. So you have to like form these pathways, it's like building a highway, right? You want like a super lane, or six lane super highway, as opposed to just a little dirt road. Right? If you have a little dirt road, you can't go very fast on it. You might wipe out and go off the road, or something like that. Whereas if you have this nice performance built, you know, Formula One track, or you know NASCAR, or whatever it is, track, then you can really go. And that's the key, is to really, yeah, this is the process that we talked about, but make sure as you do it, you're very much focused on improving. You're not focused on doing, you're focused on improving. And so you're paying attention to, okay, here's where I have this error, all right, let's correct it. And you know, so again, there's a million different examples of how you might do that. One of the beautiful things when we're talking about wealth building and becoming rich is a lot of those skills are intellectual, meaning that you can address them in a planning stage. They don't have the same, uh, as an example, here's a, the opposite example, which is very challenging to learn because of the fact that the context is much different, 
uh, probably the toughest, is interpersonal skills. And how come? Because it's difficult to effectively role play interpersonal skills. In the moment, right, you can't really interrupt it, right? Because generally the person you're interacting with and when these situations pop up that you're not used to, you don't, you might get some sort of feedback in terms of their response of how you did, and you might have some recovery, but you don't have the ability to go, well, stop, let's break that down, let's slow it down, push back, okay, now I'm gonna try this. Oh, no, that didn't quite work, let's, let's do it again, okay. Finesse, 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 oh, okay, we had the breakthrough. Now you can definitely design activities and exercises and role plays to learn these skills and to deal with these issues, and you can you know, record when they come up, and then you can mentally, we talk in, uh, in another area about the triforce of learning, so we have reflection, imitation, experience. So you can take your experience and you can reflect on it and come up and go to imitation and come up with some different ways so the next time you're in that situation you can try it again. And there's a lot of merit to mentally breaking it down, slowing it down, running through, okay, what, what might I have done differently? In this situation, okay, I would have, I might have done this thing differently. How would that probably have played out based on my mental model? Okay, and getting feedback from some other people, etc. So uh, the point is, say if we're doing, designing a marketing campaign, relatively easy to tweak that process because it's mostly intellectual. Uh, if we have something physical, you know, say playing a sport, etc., although it's highly mental in terms of how we do it, it's all us, it's internal, it's self-contained. Whereas when we bring other people in, in interpersonal skills, we have this additional variable that is flexible, right? If we're talking about, you know, working out with a weight or, you know, doing some physical motion, then the reality is that it's, it has a static way that it responds, right? When I'm swinging a Japanese sword, there's a certain way that it's going to work uh, every time because it's, you know, fixed metal as opposed to when you're dealing with the person, the person might move differently, right? Uh, so those are the three things to pay attention to, is pay attention to, all right, I want to be focused on improvement. I'm going to be very errors focused. I'm really trying to pick out, oh, that's where I'm off. That's where I'm off. And then correcting it and being highly repetitive and the high repetition is really going to help you tweak, 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 tweak. And the faster you can go through those iteration cycles, that's what we call it basically is this, you know, try something, get some feedback, tweak, go again and again and again. So the faster you can do those cycles, the quicker you're going to learn. I hope that helps you and we'll see you on the next video.